I'm risking my life by making this video. People love this show. And I'm about to say a few things that y'all will not enjoy. Hey guys, my name is Ellen Fox. Welcome to my channel. And today we're going to be talking about the season two of Bridgerton compared to the white count who loved me. Let's begin. Did she really take that paper out of here? She is literally Portia Featherington's daughter and yet she decided this is the place to keep my gossip sheet. The same sheet where I literally dragged Portia through dirt. Honey, you are sweating immensely. That ink can come off and get printed on your chest. And this show has told us that you guys do not bathe alone. You, you bathe with your mamas. You bathe with your mamas and your sisters in the presence of like 50 maids. And yet you take the risk of having that ink get on your bosoms. I thought you were clever. I thought you were Lady Whistledown, Penelope, what are you doing? That big address and not a single pocket. You know, one of these days, these pockets, they're going to be the end of us. All of us are going to be just ruined one day because of the lack of pockets. Like this big address and Madame Delacroix could not put in one pocket. What my mistress wants, she gets. So Penelope decides to put on an accent, but does not hide anything else about her. She literally even has her strawberry blonde hair all out. Like, okay, if anybody sees me, they must be able to recognize me. Hmm? Can you recognize me? Okay, good. Honey, I think you need to put like a hat on, like cover your face, do something about your face, not your accent. I think your accent is the last thing you should be concerned about. But Speaking of Penelope, the one thing that I love about the shows that I kind of did not like about the books, that they're continuously sharing everyone else's story as well. So season one did not just revolve around Simon and Daphne. They also gave us Penelope and Colin's story, Anthony's story, and Eloise. So I think this is really important because the next seasons are going to be based on them. So I need to be already interested in them in order to be willing to watch the coming seasons whereas the books just revolved around the main couple so this is one thing that i loved about the series that in eight episodes they managed to tell us the story of multiple people whereas the books are almost um, 400 pages long and yet they lack a lot of details and they do not give us the story of any other sibling or anyone else what if say one of your daughters had a penchant for overspending how do you deal with that then I shall not be concerning myself with that because she wouldn't be my daughter, Wycombe Bridgerton. She would be our daughter and she would be spending your money. So I think you should be the one concerned over the spending problem and not me. He is literally sitting there interviewing them as if they're applying for a job. You're enjoying your victory lap. Oh, I swear to God, one more time. One more time, Netflix subtitles say, speaks Hindi. I am canceling the subscription. I do not pay you every single month for you to tell me what language somebody's speaking in. Tell me what she said. I literally listened to that five times and every single time I hear bumblebee. I hear bumblebee and bumblebee is not a Hindi word. I am sure of that. I am sure we have much to learn from you, such as the preparation of this most excellent tea. <laughs> it took every bit of my willpower to continue watching this show after this scene. Not just because British tea is the only kind of tea I like and K Sharma literally disrespected it. No, that wasn't the reason. The reason was the fact that Kate decided that she is going to talk in this sarcastic and disrespectful tone with Lady Danbury. Lady Danbury, who is a freaking countess, Lady Danbury, who is the most iconic character on the show, Lady Danbury, who is letting them stay at their place, providing them with food and clothes, and is literally sponsoring this entire thing, she spoke to Lady Danbury like that. You do not bite the hand that feeds you. And I, I, there is no one on this earth that I hate more than a person who disrespects a person that is thrice their age. I don't care. Lady Danbury could be a person walking down the street. You do not talk to her like that. 
And she's supposed to be Indian. And Indian people are very respectful. Like you literally bow in front of the people that are older than you, you touch their feet. That is Indian culture. And you present me with fucking K Charma? It was so annoying. Every single time she spoke to Lady Danbury like that, every single time she spoke to a person older than her in a very disrespectful manner, it was very fucking annoying. Who does that? Is it so hard to respect people like Eloise, for example? Eloise is very outspoken. Eloise speaks her mind all the time, and yet she respects people. You would never see her say something like that to her mother, say something like that to Lady Danbury, whereas Kay Chama comes in with not a penny in hand and not even anything else, and she decides, mm, Lady Danbury, your tea is disgusting. I think it is the tea that I'm so upset about. Mostly because of the fact that later when she made the tea, my God, if an Indian person sees that, they're going to die. I have never even had Indian tea and yet I felt pain when she made that tea. You're supposed to let the spices soak in the tea for some time. The two of them absconded to India thereafter. A Maharaja, I would have understood. You guys might disagree with me on this, but if I have to choose between every family's fashion, I freaking love the Featherington's fashion. I would pick them. Like the daughters, my God, every single time their dresses are so glittery and so bejeweled. I mean, Penelope did wear like five different yellow dresses, but every single one of them was so freaking remarkable and their hairdos and their jewelry. Like, just look at this picture. Are the young ladies of London truly so easily won? by a pleasing smile and absolutely nothing more. So you find my smile pleasing? Kate, I think you're the only one here with a pleasing smile and nothing more. I'd like to take that back. You don't even have a pleasing smile because you literally are always giving a sarcastic one. Whereas Anthony is the firstborn Bridgerton, the Viscount, has many siblings. I would love to be married into a big family. So, all that money is actually what's going to get him a wife, not his smile. Whether the smile is pleasing or not, I feel like you're the one here with nothing. You're destitute, not him. Very few attempt to outwit me, and even fewer succeed. Yes, queen! I really feel like Lady Danbury should be next in line for the throne because literally nobody can outwit her. With the exception of Lady Whistledown, who has managed to keep a secret for one year. Ina deserves a chance to find love without such a burden. But if it means my sister will not be left destitute. Kate needs to make up her mind. Does she want Edwina to marry by love? Does she want Edwina to marry a good man? Or does she want Edwina to be not left destitute? Because these are three completely different things. The person Edwina wants to marry could be Joe Goldberg, a psychopath mass murderer. No one's stopping Edwina from falling in love with Joe Goldberg. A good man doesn't have to love Edwina and neither does he have to be rich. He does have to be a good man who cares for her, who listens to her, respects her. That's a good man. And a rich one. Now that is Anthony. <laughs> so Kate, what sort of husband are you looking for? And then again, this was the question that was even raised in the book in the books and in the series as well and I was really glad that they raised this question they were like Kate you are constantly bothering with what you want Edwina's husband to be and not what Edwina wants so I was really glad that they mentioned this in the series and they were like Kate Edwina is the one getting married let her make her decision if the queen abandoned this absurdity that is the diamond why did Penelope just wake up one day and chose violence? She was like, hmm, the queen, I do not like her. Of who? We know this is where Lady Whistledown prints her paper. We do? Why did you think we were here? Why do you think we were here? I'm absolutely in love with this coachman. He was such a mood throughout. I'm absolutely in love with him. I'm absolutely in love with Eloise. And I'm absolutely in love with this reporter guy. I'm the, the, this printer fellow, I, I, I've forgotten his name. I think it was Tom, but I do like him. But they were not meant to be. She is meant to be with Sir Philip. To Sir Philip with love. Somebody suggested that it is the same Sir Philip of Marina. And I was like, <gasps> what a scandal. 
don't appear scandalized. With due respect, Your Highness, you're putting a little too much trust in Lady Danbury. There are those who say that she is Lady Whistledown. You must tell me the name of the young lady who seemed to have met well out of the country. Oh, what can you mean? Can you imagine going up to your crush and asking him, you must tell me who is the woman in your life? You must. It's the, it's the choice of words that has me surprised. You must tell me. <laughs> Picture of grace, beauty and charm. One of the things that I have to give to the show writers is the fact that Edwina literally outshone Daphne as the diamond of first water. She was so perfect. She was absolutely perfect. Like there were so many times in this, in, in these eight episodes when she, there was a question or there was a situation where I was like, there is literally no polite way of getting out of this. And yet Edwina would manage she would throw such a great reply that I would be like, whoever decided to make Daphne the diamond of first water and then they present us with Edwina, my God, Edwina outshines her. She is literally perfect. She's so genteel. She's so well-mannered. She is as if that's all she knows. There is this book series called The Lukes where there was a character called Elizabeth Holland and she was supposedly like Edwina they were even the same age and I remember the book didn't revolve around like you know her manners and stuff so they didn't go into detail about how mannered she is but watching Edwina literally reminded me of Elizabeth and I literally understood why Henry Schoonmaker did not want to marry Elizabeth in the Lukes he was like I cannot be leading a death-like boredom of a life with Elizabeth Holland and her thank you notes and Watching Edwina, she is most certainly the kind of person who would first send you a thank you note upon inviting her to a ball, and then she would send you a thank you note after attending the ball. She was so damn well-mannered. Then you shall not mind this. One of the things that we have to give Kate as well is the fact that she does play Parmel like a Bridgerton. She was very competitive. She was not backing down. She was pretty excellent, which was a bit, you know, um, on the unbelievable side, considering the fact that she was playing for the first time. But I was really liking how competitive she was because that, you know, in that moment, Daphne and Benedict and everyone involved knew that she was perfect for Anthony. I was asking you to decide which one of us should live, me or the baby. I can't believe they were even asking that question. Like that lady has already birthed seven children, four sons. The Viscount has already been made. How many more children do you want out of her? They really be standing there questioning, do you want the baby or do you want your mother, sir? Do you honestly think he's going to pick an unborn sibling over his mother? Maybe he wouldn't want the dowager's influence on him. So maybe he would be like, okay, let's be rid of her as soon as I become the white county. That is there. This is a very political moment. Now I do understand why he was asking that question. Oh! Benedict, dear. Benedict's entire role in this series was to pop in every five minutes, do something cute and leave. He was so freaking adorable throughout the show. And this scene in particular, he was just like, oh. I dropped the wine glass and red wine stains stay and yet Lady Bridgerton was like Benedict dear she was so freaking polite everyone on this show is so freaking polite which makes Kate even more unsufferable or is it insufferable insufferable this is my work oh my who the hell let's say Stone man, run to a window. I half expected him to jump out. What if he had? Y'all just stood there and let him run to a window, open it and hang himself out of there and be like, you shall all bear witness to my talent. What if he had jumped out? What if he had slipped? Y'all just let him. What if we had lost Benedict Deer tonight? Marina. Miss Thompson. Did he really just declare that he wants to meet the woman who is married to one man 
has children of another and literally tried to trick him into marriage. Like say what you must about Marina, she did try to trick Colin into marriage and that is not right. She literally tried to turn him against his family, have him run away and marry her. And that, that's not right. No, no, do not. Do not. Jonathan ate the scene up and left no crumbs. The way he portrayed that panic attack, like he was unable to complete his sentences, he was breathing and like he was not breathing completely and when you're having an anxiety attack you are not able to breathe completely it feels like you're the air is coming to like here and then just getting out and you're like i cannot breathe like no matter how hard you try it feels like the air is coming till here and then it's just leaving so he ate the scene up though i was hoping they had stuck to the original story because this scene in the series was so darn good they had already had their first kiss at that point and I cannot tell you how how mad I am at the fact that there were not enough kiss scenes. Like the, the book, my god, the book. The book literally has it on the description. Like the last line of the description says he makes the mistake of kissing her. So the kiss was really important and he didn't kiss her. And then this scene had like, can you imagine if they had done like the actual book in the actual book? He's like, I must suck the poison out. So he like starts sucking up her breast and suddenly they turn around and there is a Mary, Portia Featherington and Violet Bridgerton, the three of them watching them. <laughs> Can you imagine how awesome that scene would have been? No, no, they have to just change the entire story. He is the one I want, Kate, the Viscount. I don't know about everyone out there, but I was not a fan of the fact that they made this love triangle this strong. Like, why did Edwina have to fall in love with Antony? What burden would it be to marry the person I love? You love him. I get it that Kate shouldn't have fallen in love with him either, because throughout the series, they made it abundantly clear that Kate has one aim in life, and that is to make sure that Edwina finds happiness. But okay, she fell in love with Antony. But there was absolutely no need for Antony and Edwina to nearly get married. Like they stood in church, they said half of the wows, and then you call off the wedding. Like, y'all did Edwina so damn dirty. And then the fact that he moves on and marries Kate, it just seems disrespectful. Like they did add in the show that the queen decided that he, he is, he's not going to marry the diamond, he's going to marry the diamond's sister. That wedding did not happen because I simply changed my mind. Do you honestly think that is just going to shut people up and even shut their minds? Because this looks very disrespectful. It's almost as if you like a certain breed of horses. I didn't get one sister or marry the other. That's what it seems like. And you know what? I actually don't care. I've never said that, you know, there should be like a girl code that you shouldn't ever date my ex. I don't care about that. Like, come on, we're besties. We should be going through the same emotional damage. But the way this was presented, it should not have gone all the way to the wedding. Come on. It should not have. It happened in the books. The books gave you a perfectly well story. Edwina doesn't fall in love with Antony. But no, they had to make her fall in love with Antony. Why? Now the rain makes me think of him. Another big difference between the books and the series is that they completely eliminated Kate's fear of storms. Now, I was okay with it because when I was reading the book, I remember thinking that it wasn't necessary for both of them to have a childhood fear that they were yet to overcome. And the way they overcame those fears was not detailed enough. So I was looking forward to the series going into the, the detail of these phobias but they completely eliminated it and I was not happy because Anthony and Kate shared a lot of great tender moments during, you know, these storms. And they were like, oh, okay, whatever. We're just going to rob you of these scenes. Speaking of differences, in the series, Anthony is a lesser rake than he was in the books. And I was glad because if I'm being completely honest, Sometimes while reading the book, Anthony 
would almost make me uncomfortable like he would literally be acting like a perv to be honest so i was kind of glad that even though the first episode was called capital r rake it's still you know anthony is still not that big of a rake the first kiss they robbed us of the first kiss how dare you and then the second kiss when they were betrothed there was there was supposed to be a second kiss and there were supposed to be many kisses before they got married and then there were supposed to be no kisses after they got married but then there were supposed to be like i didn't watch the series for the kisses but the lack of them compared to the books was like mm, why the scent of the jasmine is absolutely ambrosial i can't believe that a group of people literally followed an overly eager Pocha Featherington into an orange garden. Why is it that you dislike me so? Because, because you vex me. Because you vex me. There was so much tension in this scene. And it was kind of funny too. I mean, I remember laughing. Like, she is shaking. She is literally shaking. That's how much he waxes her. <laughs> and yet we did not receive a kiss. That is one thing that I predicted might happen, but I was hoping would not happen. <laughs> it would be fun. To be honest. Oh my god, can you imagine if Portia and Nigel Burbrook get together? <laughs> In the books, he was... Oh, would that be a spoiler? Please, Lord Bridgerton. Anthony, you must keep your word. Did she just call him by his first name while asking him to marry her sister? You should never call a man by his first name. No. If you are under these sort of circumstances, that is. <laughs> Literally, my favorite pickup line is, let's make a deal. I'll give you my second name, you'll scream my first. That's my favorite pickup line. <laughs> and she said, she called him Anthony. If I go through with this wedding, it will have nothing to do with you. So since the beginning of time, Kate has made it abundantly clear that her one aim in life is to make sure that her half-sister and stepmother receive a good life. She is literally 26 and travelled halfway across the world to make sure that Edwina finds a good match. That's her one focus in life and yet Edwina had the audacity to say, if I get married, it would be for me. This is why you shouldn't care too much about people. They turn into spoiled brats. They be careful. Oh, the days that we have reached. Have we fallen from grace so badly that now Lady Cowper is ignoring us? That we had to firstly approach her and then she rejected us. This scene was just downright adorable. Like, it was so freaking cute the way all of them were just dancing together. And this is like the one time in my life where I was like, having seven siblings could be fun. Perhaps ruinous one. For she's apparently been associating unchaperoned with improper company. I cannot believe it. Out of all the things in the world that Penelope could have written, she chose this. You know what she could have written? Eloise Bridgerton is rather keen on finding my identity. She needs to stop. She could have done that. She could have said a million things. Why did she have to ruin Eloise like that? Unchaperoned in improper company. That's what she wrote about her best friend, her only friend. Which reminds me that there was a great scene in this book that they did not give us. In one scene, Antony saved Penelope from Miss Cowper, the younger one. And I was really hoping that they would put that scene in the show, but they didn't. My god, they, they have robbed us of so many great scenes. What is their problem?
I would not know, ma'am. We have all been busy keeping the elder Miss Sharma in mind until, as we hope, she recovers from her fall. Yes, her fall from Grace. Because I am unsure I like the young ladies we have both been playing. And I am sure I don't like the young ladies you two have been playing. This scene was way too pure. Brought me to tears. Might he finally dance with me tonight? Not if he knows what is best for him. The way she always sounds drunk. <laughs> Freaking love her. It's in this necklace. Penelope, Mr. Bridgerton. What is the meaning of this? Can you imagine if Portia had managed to stitch Penelope and Colin as well in this moment? <laughs> Can you imagine what people would have thought? Her daughters are always getting caught in scandals. That is the only way they can get betrothed. Because otherwise, nobody would ask for their hand. This is the only way they can get married. Through scandals. Sequestered here, in this very room, writing your secret little scandal sheet. At least I did something. All you ever do is talk about doing something. I think I have made it abundantly clear that I love Eloise, but in this moment, I stand with Penelope. All you ever do, Eloise, is speak of doing something great, whereas Penelope, yes, she has hurt a lot of people, but she has done something great. We have to be honest here. She might be hiding in her room, writing her little gossip sheet, but that gossip sheet has literally shook London. And it is a big thing. I know she hurt you, and for that, I hate Penelope. But... She did achieve something for Penelope to be a wallflower and for her to just do something like that. It is truly amazing. They are three young ladies, often nettling and contrary, but they are mine. Boy, did Portia earn everyone's respect in this moment when she chose her girls over this man, this fraud. Because let's be honest here, one day one of them was going to betray the other. And it was highly likely that Portia was going to win because, like, you cannot outwit her. I would never dream of courting Penelope Featherington. Not in your wildest fantasies, Fife. <laughs> At least they put in one scene that existed in this book. Was it this book? I don't recall which book it was. Maybe it was the second one. But this scene did exist in the books. But... Colin was not standing among friends, he was standing with Antony and Benedict. I wouldn't take this too hard, Penelope, to be honest. I mean, when we are among friends, we also say things we don't mean. Like, I told my friends I wouldn't get back together with my toxic ex, but I did. So, you know, you shouldn't take the things seriously that are said among friends. This was the most unrealistic scene in this entire show. Both seasons. Since the beginning of time, when has a sibling ever smiled at PDA from another sibling? I would literally throw up if I see my brother like that. <laughs> That's what we do among friends as well. Every time I see someone with someone, I'm like, uh, uh. like I set you two up, but like, uh. So that was it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, give me a like. Also, comment below and let me know your opinions. If you do not agree with me, don't. I don't care. Actually, I do. I do care. <laughs> I do care. Um, so yeah, let me know your opinions and also subscribe. Click the notification bell so you don't. You'll be notified every time I upload and also follow me on my Instagram and Twitter. They're both at LMFox. And also check out my edits channel. Um, I already have a Simon and Daphne edit and I would be making a few more of other characters. So yeah, go and subscribe there. And thank you for watching. I'm the only LMFox in this world and I never, never did I think that this book would be better than the show. I always thought that the show was going to be better. But I guess opinions can change. It's when we leave and all I really want to know. When we leave and all I really need to know. Is when we